Hello and welcome. In today's exciting episode, I make a shirt dress from McCall's M8194. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. So I was all set to make a tweed jacket. Only then I got the indecisions and I couldn't decide which um, tweed to go with. I really wanted to make the Italian tweed in blue with the the one with the bright green dots on it. But um, I went with the check because um, this Tom Brown style one and I decided to do it's a different McCall's one and I decided to do that one. So I started by cutting that all up and I recorded all that and then I pinned it all together and I started and I... Yeah, I just, um, I don't know. I, it's been so long since I've made a jacket that's um, got a collar and lapel. So I was sort of second guessing myself. So I was like, mm, actually, I should probably make a shirt with a collar and lapel first. So I got out the shirts that I'm going to do in the near future in the next few months. This one's a cowboy shirt and it's got a collar and collar band again this princess seams with collar and collar band so not quite what I'm looking for this is um the jacket also has a shirt pattern again collar and collar band these two are lapels and collar so you know they are what I'm looking for and I decided to go with the McCall's one because I can fully line it and turn it into a shirt dress and um, yeah I just thought that would be more fun so I went with that one traced out the bits and then cut out all the pieces it's actually quite simple it's got a front that's in a left and right so it's two parts then a back and then it's got sleeves and collar so it's only four bits so it's pretty good so you need so then I got out the instructions and read what I have to do so it's pretty straightforward because I'm doing it as a lined dress it's actually making it easier so instead of doing the facing I'm doing a full lining so I cut out two fronts two backs and then, yeah, when you're putting it together, instead of just sewing the neckline at the point where you sew the neckline, what you do is you um, pin the collar to one side, then you pin the other side over the collar and the other side. And that's the only sort of extra bit that you do. And then you turn it in the correct way and then you add the sleeves. So it's actually quite easy. So transposing it into jacket form, I make the outer jacket, I make the lining. And then before I pin them together at the neckline, I insert the collar. Then I sew the whole thing together. Okay, now that I understand, so it's only slightly different from how I make my normal jackets. Got it. I think I was getting confused by how you do a collar band in a yeah, in a shirt, and that is more complicated. But this collar and lapel, I'm, I, I've got my head around it now. So I'm kind of okay with that, but I'm not going to make the tweed jacket because that's going to take forever. I think I'm just going to stick with the shirt dress. So we will go ahead and make this pattern up. I'll do the sleeves first and get them all up to the point where they're ready to be attached because it annoys me to stop and do that later on. So first up, I just sew the underarm sleeve a seam and then the next thing is to pleat down the bottom. You're actually in the pattern, they tell you to just sew elastic into the cuff, but I would find that really irritating against my skin. So I just put a one big pleat at the middle of the sleeve and then two on either side. And then in between those three, I put two small pleats. And I also put one sort of biggish pleat um, going outwards at the top of the sleeve so it's a nice billowy shape and it sits beautifully when it's on the arm so yeah so this is me just showing you here so I did sew in the one pleat and then I did two in the so there's something at each quarter there's either a seam or a pleat and then between the three pleats I do two little ones and then I um, sort of stack them up on top of each other really neatly so that it, the puff of the sleeve sits out beautifully outside the sleeve and the seam on the inside of your arm just sits flat against the body so it doesn't the puff stays out the whole time and then I just um, did a fold line sewed a fold line and then tucked the seam up and it's ready to hand sew those cuffs. 
I think these ones are actually, I forgot to take into account the amount of turn up, the amount of bulk that will create. So I think next time I'll sew slightly smaller pleats and yeah, just make it easier for my hand to get through. But apart from that, it's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, now time to move on to the bodice. As I mentioned, there's a left and a right. So they have to be sewn together. Um, so up the bodice but leave them open at the lapels um, the bottom green dot uh, pin is where they want you to sew it but I'm just going to sew it up a little bit higher because I don't want it right down I don't know I don't like a really deep v in my bodice so I'm going to machine sew them together I did the outer bodice as well as the lining bodice and now it is time to attach the front to the back at the sides and the shoulders so I did that for the outer bodice as well as the lining bodice so just pin them then machine sewed them and now it, if you were doing collarless you would just um, sew the two bodices around uh, together at the neckline but we have got using a collar so the collar has three parts it has a top a bottom and a line and a interfacing piece I'm not using fusible interfacing I'm just I just cut out a third collar piece out of the same fabric and that's going to add more weight to the top part so I pinned the two top ones together and then there's the bottom one. And here again, I got confused between a, coll a shirt that has a collar stand and one that doesn't. So that's why I did that line of stitching across the bottom. You don't need to do that unless there's a collar stand involved, which there's not. So all you have to do is sew them together around three sides right from the bottom you don't need to leave room like you do for a collar stand so you sew them around three sides and then clip those corners the two corners and then turn the whole thing very carefully inside the correct way and then press it and then you sort of put the two um bodices together the lining and the outer bodice and in between them you put the collar so you pin the collar to say the outer bodice and once that's pinned properly then you sort of put the uh, lining version of the bodice over everything and pin it around the neckline carefully matching up all those notches so here we are so first I'm going to do the collar part or the neckline part and once that's all done and all those pins are out of the way I'll do the lapel part so these straight bits down the front here so okay wish me luck <laughs> I'll go and do that on the machine now and um, it's actually pretty straightforward I think I'm daunted because most of the shirts I make are collar band shirts and they are more complicated this one is actually pretty straightforward so it's machine sewn and again you just have to cut those corners and clip the the whole of the bit around the collar and then turn it out very carefully and we are done so here we go that was actually quite painless and um yeah so this is done and it is time to attach the sleeves it's looking pretty good as I said I didn't put the darts in the back so it's a little baggier than the pictures but that's fine because I'm it's going to be a shirt dress and I'm going to wear it with a sash or a tie around it anyway so now it is time to pin the sleeves in um you're supposed to gather the sleeves at the top but I instead I sewed that one pleat in and then I put two other pleats in as I was actually pinning it down so whichever style you prefer this is a really good shirt I think it, I've got small shoulders so it's going to be, look a little big on me but just generally speaking, this is a really good pattern. I um, I don't know. I didn't like the picture on the front of the pattern so much. I like the illustrations, really like them, but I didn't like the picture so much, the sample one. But yeah, it's actually really pretty. I'm, I'm glad I got this pattern. Anyway, so this is fine. And now I'm going to turn it into a dress by adding a layer cake skirt. So back in June was... Um, purple and yellow month and I have a few bits of purple left over so I'm just yeah I've torn them into strips and this is going to be the top of the skirt the middle of the skirt and I ran out of time so I haven't done the bottom skirt so I've done the first two layers and I'll show you this and then at some point later I'll add the other um 
tier of the skirt. But um, actually, I kind of like this just under the knee length one. And um, yeah, so I sewed the first, uh, the two bits for the first tier together. Then I sewed the three bits for three layers of the second tier together. Then I pleated pleated them down, pleating them down. That means, so I pinned the two together and once it was pinned at like 16 points, then I did knife pleats around so that it, it was pleated rather than gathered. And then I machine sewed them. And then I machine sewed the top of the skirt to the bottom of the bodice, the same, using the same method, matched up four points, then eight points, then 16. And as I said, um, I've still got some fabric left. I think I might do three layers on the bottom um, tier because um, it would be really cute if it was a full length. But then as I was filming this, I was like, actually, I kind of like it at this under knee length. It sits really well and it would be really easy to walk in. But then I also love a really long maxi skirt that's super full. So I don't know, maybe I'll wear it like this for a bit and then eventually do the last layer, like the last big tier. And when it gets colder and I can wear that, then maybe I'll do that. Leave it like this for a bit. Anyway, I think it looks absolutely darling with this sash too. I was a little worried because the top is very lilac purple and the bottoms kind of got darker ones in there. But I put that run of that tier of lilac around the knee. So I don't know. I think it goes pretty well. So yeah, I'm quite happy with the way that this turned out. I'm very tired poor at the moment. And when I was really disappointed with myself for not doing a tweed jacket, but I have figured out um, how to do a collar and lapel and it's much less stressful than <laughs> I assumed because I was working on the idea that it was even harder than a collar band um, shirt, but it's not. It's absolutely, it's quite straightforward when you sort of put it, do everything in the correct order. That said, I think I'll put this jacket off for a little bit longer. I don't think I'll, I don't think this check one here will be the next one that I do. I think, um, I don't know, I just really love that blue with green um, made in Italy tweed. So yeah, maybe with all my time that I have, maybe I'll magically get that one done. I don't know. Anyway, absolutely love this shirt dress. Definitely making more. This sleeve is beautiful. It also has a short sleeve. So, or I, I guess you could do sleeveless as well. I never really think of shirt dresses as sleeveless, but you can definitely do them that way. I don't think I'll add the other two tier, the um, other three bits to this at the moment. I think I'll just keep it just under the knee, the knee length at the moment. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I was so stressed out when I couldn't get the tweed jacket done. I was looking at it, I was going, I don't know what to do. I don't know, because I was just so time poor at the moment. And um, yeah, sewing a dress is so much easier than doing all the hand sewing that's involved in making a jacket properly. So yeah, very glad I finally got something done. And I definitely recommend this pattern. I sort of had low expectations of it because the sample one they have in the pitch photo isn't as nice as I would like it to be. But yeah, it's as gorgeous as the illustrations suggest it would be. I think next time I make it, I'm a little short-waisted. So the next time I make it, I'll probably take an inch or two off the bottom of the bodice. But just for normal average people, like um, people who aren't short-waisted. I think it's pretty perfect the way it is. So if you are looking for a shirt dress pattern that's really, really simple, I think this is a good one. Uh, 10 out of 10, highly recommend. And I mean, I'm disappointed I didn't get time to make a tweed jacket, but this is a very, very cute shirt dress.